This program is brought to you by Statesboro Natural Gas. I know. You want a piece of cake? Well, try one. Well, I'm here today to make my blue ribbon pound cake, and this is a recipe I've been using for at least 20 years, and it's, um, it's pretty easy to do, but a lot of people are scared to do pound cakes because there's so many times when it's dry, you know, and most of the time the problems come in with um, not measuring your flour right and not measuring um, the sugar correctly and even not measuring your liquid ingredients correctly. So what I'm going to do today is just go step by step and by the time I finish this up I will show you exactly how to make the pound cake and it will be foolproof. It will work every time. It will always deliver and you'll have a beautiful pound cake every time you make it. So first thing we have to do is we have to measure the flour correctly. And a lot of people, when they measure flour, they pull out this. But this is problematic because this is a liquid measuring cup. And so you always have to use the right kind, which would be a dry measuring cup. And um, a lot of people, too, will end up, you know, having their cake flour, which, by the way, you don't use uh, self-rising or you don't use all-purpose flour. You use cake flour. And what I usually do is, I go to the top of my cup measuring um, device, and then I always have a knife nearby. And I just go ahead and do it just like that. So you get a true one cup. Okay, so we've got to have three cups of flour. And again, we're going to measure properly. And then in a minute, when we finish measuring our flour and get the three cups ready, we're going to um, sift the flour because we want the cake to be light and airy and we don't want it to be a packed cake. So there's two cups. Baking is absolutely a science and you have to be a legalist. You have to follow that rule and you have to follow the instructions and it can't be three and a half cups flour. It's got to be three cups flour only. We've got your three cups flour and what I do is I just have my sifter always ready. We're going to put this in here. We're going to sift, which when I was a young mother, I had two daughters to raise, and Morgan and Allison always loved to do this part because I love to sift, and I'm 49 years old. We've got to get three cups of uh, sugar. So you've got three cups flour, three cups of sugar. And again, we are not going to pull out our liquid measuring cup to get three cups of sugar. You've got to use your dry measuring device to get your sugar. Sugar's a little bit easier to measure because it's not, it doesn't have to be sifted. You can go straight into the um, bag and come right out to get a true measuring of three cups. We also have to have one cup of milk. I've already measured out the milk. But we always, of course, want to use the liquid measuring cup to make sure that we have eight ounces, which is one cup, all right? We're going to start with, and this needs to be um, at room temperature, and then also with the half cup Crisco, we're also going to use two sticks of margarine with your mixer. If you look at the bottom, it has small bowl, large bowl. You want to put it on your large bowl. And then we're going to start by creaming the butter and margarine together. And of course, everything's room temperature. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add sugar into it and then add eggs. But before I start though, one thing that people do that's a mistake is when you get to the egg section, they crack the egg and add to it. But that's not going to always work because why? We don't want eggshells in there. And so I always, ahead of time, get a, a measuring cup out and I go ahead and I crack my eggs and have them ready. And that way I know that I'm not going to have eggshells 
in a um, in my cake batter. Five eggs, and also you want to use large eggs, not medium, not extra large. But again, we're going to play by the rules, and this calls for five large eggs. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start creaming the margarine and the shortening together. And at this stage, you just want to make sure that it's incorporated nicely and it's blended together. And I always have my spoon here to make sure it's mixed well. Okay, I've already got the um, margarine and the Crisco ready. The next stage is to go ahead and add your sugar in. And I just gently give it a little bit of sugar and let it breathe and just be nice to the cake and add the sugar in gracefully. We're not gonna dump it. And so as it continues to mix, we just watch it here. You don't have to do anything. Every now and then I'll scrape down the sides but it just takes a little while to, to mix it well and to cream it. And what you're looking for in that creamy texture is a really, if you look at it right now, and if you look, if you, I don't know if you can get into the dish here, but I mean into the, into the um, bowl, but right now, if you look at it, it's very granular. Okay, and we don't want granular. We want, at the end of this, for this to be very, very, very soft looking and creamed, and we don't want to see a lot of grains at the end, so you're just gonna have to let it go for a minute or two. If you don't cream it long enough, your cake is not gonna rise properly. And so you've got to cream it for a while, and this is where, this is the stage where you've gotta be patient, and you know, you think, oh, isn't it done yet? But it's really, it's still not done. This is the stage where you still can lick the bowl. But you know, I believe you can lick the bowl at any stage. I know that we all are like really scared of salmonella poisoning, et cetera, et cetera. But when I was growing up, I licked every bowl that my mama made of pound cakes and I never got it. And so I still believe that you can lick that bowl through the entire process. So, but for right now, if you are a stickler and if you're a germaphobe and such, you could lick the batter, the paddles right now. Today, um, I'm suggesting that people go and get their eggs from Jacob's Produce or from Wee Farms or Heirloom Kitchen Garden or either Little Chicken Ranch. And so we want farm fresh eggs to go in here. And then also, there's a vendor here um, that has um, the whole milk. And that's um, Hunter Cattle has the whole milk here. And you can use that to make it extra special and extra fresh. Okay, do you see how this is getting a lot lighter looking? That's another thing we want this to see. It appears very light now and a little granular still, so I'm gonna continue mixing it. Okay, y'all, we're at the place right now where we can go ahead and start incorporating the eggs. All right, we're going to put one in at a time. 
And when you do so, I just let it go in and I usually count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And basically you're just trying to make sure that that egg is incorporated. So as long as you see that that yellow ribbon has somewhat disappeared, you can go ahead and put in that next egg. All right, we'll let it do it again. And um, you don't want to overbeat these eggs at this stage because I've read that that will make a very tough cake. You know, I have my KitchenAid and I also have this Sunbeam Mix Master that I've had for like 30 years. But I sort of like my Mix Master because I can have a little bit more room to control the flow of uh, ingredients into it and you can see it a little bit better. And this is the part where we're going to start adding the flour. And we're going to alternate with flour and milk. And it always says to begin this process with flour. And back when I was younger, when I would try to bake a cake when I was in my early 20s, I would also, I would often create a huge dust storm because I did not understand that you don't just dump that flour in. And the first time I ever made a cake, I dumped it all in and it was as if we were in Kansas and there was a huge dust bowl and I had a huge puff of smoke go up and I learned very quickly that that does not work. And um, so you've got to add the flour in a little bit at a time. And my mixer's not going quite fast enough here, but I'll go ahead and start it up a little bit. So you want to incorporate your flour, starting first with your dry ingredient, and then we're going to add a little bit of milk as we go along. And again, we're not going to overbeat this flour because we've sifted it and it's nice and light and airy and we do not want to overdo this part of mixing these ingredients in. And we don't want to drown it either. We're not going to pour this whole three cups of, one cup of milk in there. So we're going to be nice to our cake. You know what, if you think about it, this cake has got three cups of sugar and it's got skim milk and it's got eggs. And you know, we're also negative, negative about sugar nowadays. But, you know, the older I get, the more I embrace the sugar. Like, I think we need to use honeys, and we need to use sugar, and we need to get away from these artificial sugar uh, sweeteners. I think that it's just better to put some good old sugar in your diet. Now, we're not going to overdo it and become diabetics, but we are going to eat the sugar and the honey, and we are not going to use so many artificial sweeteners. Now here, I've got a little bit of flour left, and you see I've got a little bit of milk left, and I'm supposed to end on that flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my milk in here. So I'll follow the rules, because ultimately, we want the cake to turn out looking like that. So we're gonna have this last little bit of dry ingredient go in. So right here, we have got it all mixed together, but we've got two little very important ingredients at the end to add. And that is one teaspoon of lemon extract and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now we do not want to use imitation vanilla, do we? No, we do not. And so we go ahead and spend a little bit more. Here's the lemon, and it's sort of yellow, all right? Oh, I want you to smell the vanilla too. Let's open this new vanilla up. Vanilla. You love vanilla? Yeah. I bet you know something about vanilla ice cream. Can you open that for me? Do you like vanilla ice cream? Did you know where it comes from originally? It comes from a vanilla bean. <gasps> I bet you didn't know that, did you? A vanilla bean. I like black beans, right? Never heard of vanilla uh, It's a little vanilla bean that makes the vanilla extract. Okay, smell this. That one? <gasps> I love vanilla. Okay, so we're gonna do vanilla. All right, so we've got a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of lemon extract, and that's the last little thing. Can you put that in there for me? Spill it. All right, there we go. Woo! Okay, but now are we going to let it stay right there in that little puddle? No. And we don't want to make that mixer go high speed because, again, we're going to be nice to our cake. We're going to be gentle with it. And while we're doing this, we want to make sure we incorporate that vanilla and that lemon in there just oh so softly. So now we've got it done and look, it's ready. 
but you know what? We've got to pour it into the pan. Now this is where my mama has great advice. My mother and I always uh, talk about cake sticking a little bit, and my mama always says, Gee, Lynn, spray the fool out of that thing. And so I think it's, is it, do y'all see any areas where you feel like I should put more? Because I don't want this thing to stick. I'm gonna put a little bit more for the judge. Yeah, I'm like wanting to, I'm wanting to make it look real white royal. Okay, so we've got it here, and we're going to now, we're going to pour it in here. Now look at my arm, look at there. You've got a hole on this baby. So you are going to pour this batter in. At the end, um, sometimes my batter is a little stiffer than that. I think I talked a lot today and maybe um, mixed it a tiny bit more, but I always at the end get it and on my um, table at home, I do that two or three or four times just to make sure there are no air bubbles and get it even before you put it in the oven. And then it's ready to go in the oven. Now the deal is we're going to put this in a cold oven. You're going to put it not on the bottom rack. No, because why? Why aren't we going to put it on that bottom rack? It will burn the bottom and we're not going to put it at the top of the oven either, are we? No, because it'll burn the top. So you're going to put it in the middle part of the oven. You're going to put it in the oven, turn it on to 300 degrees, 300 degrees, and you're going to let it go for 90 minutes, an hour and a half, at which time you're going to get a little cake tester, which looks like a very long toothpick, very thin, long toothpick, and you're going to te uh, test it. And if it comes out dry with no crumbs on it, uh, you're ready to go. And you can pull it out of the oven. And you're going to take it out of the oven, put it on top of your rack, and you're going to put the cake uh, pan there for 10 minutes. And then at 10 minutes, you're going to take the cake pan and you're going to flip that on top. I stop every time and say, dear Lord, I have tried so hard to make this cake well. Please allow me to dump it well and do not stick. And I pray that prayer every time in earnest and then I flip it. And as long as you hear it go, you know you have done it, and then you lift it up ever so slightly, and you will have a cake that did not stick. At which time, when you take it off and it's sitting there, it's still gonna be hot, and you've got to let it stay on here for a while. You do not wanna dump your cake on your plastic cake container, because why? You don't wanna cool it on this, and why don't we want to? Yes, condensation, it's called, you're gonna have a sweaty cake. And after all this, you do not want to have a sweaty cake. You want to have a cake that can, that can breathe. You know, it's all about breathing. So we're going to have it on top of that, that Royal's holding, and you're going to let this cake breathe, and it's going to be happy, and it's going to cool. And then you can put it on this, or even something prettier like this, a crystal dish, which I always have around, to have your cake on display when you serve it to your guests or your family. And if any of y'all would like this recipe, you can email me, JennyLynnAnderson939 at gmail.com, or you can visit my website, JennyLynnAnderson.com. I appreciate y'all being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you.